9.05 a.m. Sanon awakes, groggy with sleep in his eyes, and reaches for another drink. <laughs> wow, that got kind of dark kind of quick. Hi guys, and welcome to another video. It is indeed early in the morning. Uh, I want to record some Grimrock with you. I've wasted maybe the past hour, two hours, maybe even three. Uh, just reading about Pokemon because of Oras coming out and wondering if I should get back into the anime. Oh my god, it is a rabbit hole. I mean, I think the anime is great, but it's got some serious continuity issues that just kind of make me die a little bit inside. I wish that Ash actually aged some way. Whatever, anyway. Uh, today we're in the Pyramid of Yumus. In case you missed last episode, we, um... Kind of wandered in here on a bit of a whim uh, when originally we were planning on going to the ruins of Deserun, and uh, we have really only just begun. Um, I have personally now played quite far into the pyramid. I wish I could say I've completed it for you guys, but the place is pretty big. There's quite a lot of stuff going on. Our goal, at least for today though, is going to be to get off of the first floor. So let's have a little bit of a recap here. The uh, floor is structured as such. We've got a door all the way over there beyond those trap doors, and we have two teleporters. One for the Tomb of the Highborn, and one for the Tomb of the Forgotten, that kind of give you extra access to these wings, one in the west and one in the east of the pyramid. So this is the one we're starting with, and I left you guys with this setup that we want to get along this long hallway in this little puzzle here. Every time we tread on one of these pressure pads, we lift up one of these um, to actually walk across. I can't remember if last episode we actually climbed down here, did we? Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, and the reason why we spent quite a while last episode was because down here were two little secrets. There was a note we found and um, a secret with something pretty basic in it, I do think. So anyway, we need just two more of these pressure pads now. You'll notice we don't actually need weight on these or anything. And you might be kind of scared, like, what happens if we lift all of these up before going down? Do you lock yourself out? Well, not quite. That's not exactly how it works. I can't really remember, to tell you the truth. We also have this hidden door here, if you remember, which uh, is still closed. I can't quite remember how many of these we've trod on. So this was the other one we trod on, which means this one over here on the left and forward I haven't trod on yet. Correct, there you go, which lifts that one up, which is fantastic. We've got the three sarcophagi there, which- we Oh my god, which we don't have to worry about. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, that scared me, and I don't know how that scared me so much, but that really did scare me. This place is so freaky! I'm not even like, you know, in the, the ambient mood right now, but apparently that was enough to make me feel myself just a little bit. So, there we go. Let's finish these mummies off. This is a pretty deadly combo. If you get surrounded with these rats, they can do a real number on you. Thankfully, our fire is pretty OP. You guys, uh, I started the last episode asking you guys, hey, where do you think we should spec Sanon as a mage from now on, you know? And I think uh, you guys had a really good point about maybe putting him into air magic, you know? Um, we never even showed off air magic on the previous LP, so that's uh, a little something nice for you guys as well who have watched both. Uh, we'll kind of get that uh, display and we'll be able to use invisibility, all those kinds of things. It's funny to me how much I've forgotten of the old series, I've got to be honest. Like, it wasn't even that long ago, I guess? Or well, maybe it was. Maybe this is just an example of time flying. Um, but yeah, so many small little things. I actually went back and watched one of those old episodes I'd recorded where we were collecting a treasure. You know, I'd even forgotten about that friggin' whole mechanic. In the previous Grimrock, there were special items you could get in secret that were golden things that looked like they were worth lots of riches. Now, this is a franchise that doesn't have vendors, right? Um, you know, you think about what Grimrock 3 could add, uh, you know, if they ever did another game, if they get the money, if they're successful enough. They can have much more open worldy type stuff um, and, you know, slowly start introducing all these RPG mechanics as we saw, uh, you know, throughout the 90s while this franchise, while this uh, genre was first being birthed, I guess. And, you know, the idea of vendors is not something we currently see in Grimrock. So, Grimrock 1 had this cool idea where you'd get a lot of these treasures and achievements for finding the treasures but nothing else. And on this game, they don't really have those. They just have, you know, secrets that give you stuff you, you'll like for your, your characters. And I can understand them making that decision. But it's funny to me that I forgot that secrets were a thing. That's crazy! And then I watched this episode of me talking to myself two years ago, or whatever it was. One year? Was it two years already? I think it must have just been one year. Talking about these treasures and all these secrets that had completely slipped my mind. I've said it before, I don't say it much on the series, but one thing I love about doing this is just that preservation of who you are, like on videos and on the internet. I don't know whether I'll ever actually go back and watch all my old stuff, but I like that that part of me, who I was, you know, all that time ago, is sort of immortalized, at least until YouTube 
and Google, you know, try to take over the world and then governments have to step in and the YouTube servers end up going offline and everything is lost, which is absolutely what is going to happen. So here we have a very suspicious looking room after we've killed a bunch of these guys. Um, I'm going to save it. I have this little file here called Live, that's the one that I do, uh, where I save my progress so that in case everything goes wrong, like the game crashing, which I almost thought it had done there, um, I can still reload and like not lose progress. So here we go. Um, how about we drink one of our potions as well? Let's drink this rage potion, if anything bad happens. Uh-oh, well, it seems to have locked us in. We do have a se secret button just here, but we'll push that in a second. And here come the enemies. So we will use our rage potion. We're going to fight in the dark here as well, guys. But I think it's worth it because Jonker does so much more damage on that other weapon set. Wow, he's getting hit hard. Good example of how much damage the Cobras do, isn't it? Uh, we are going to get attacked on the side in a second. Hopefully, we can kill these mummies quick enough. Sanon, you got any energy? That's fine. There we go. Oh, that was a huge hit. He just hit for 200. And I caught it there. All right, they're all dead. Let's hide, hide in here. Okay, Tikrit, you're right. We got any potions? How is it every episode I prepare a bunch of health potions and then when I start recording again, they're all gone? Oh, oh my god, there he is, there he is, there he is. <laughs> Those things looming out of the dark. No, and then there's this one on our side. This isn't good. Come on, we got to kill this thing now. Okay, 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 okay. Range, stop chasing me. You see how quick these snakes are? It's scary. Okay, we can't use volley, but we've got range now. <laughs> So we'll be okay. Oh no, do we have any? We do. Anti-venom. 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 Uh, okay. 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 Just keep our range. Where's the snake? There it is. All right. All right. All right. Jeez, what is it? This this episode. I'm so not ready for this. Ah. 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 Okay. 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 Now we can throw this dagger, I guess. Okay. That missed. That sucks. Let's drink another one of these. We can use our ice spell. Funnily enough, um, with Sanon, when we start going into air magic, we're going to be in a situation where he's had one point in every element. He'll become a master of fire and a master of air, probably. And by the time he's a master of air, we should be pretty far in the game, honestly. Though, the more I look, the more I see that there's just these immense dungeons and stuff and fun things for us to keep going for. This is crazy. All right, you ready? Whew, good job, Jonker. I do not remember that, that room being so difficult, but okay, we're fine. We all got through unscathed. Well, we were scathed, but not permanently scathed, so that's fine. Let's get some more spider, some snakes, spider tail, sorry? Some snake tails here, delicious. Um, and in here, we'll find that there are a couple of things for us to collect, more pellets. It's weird, I feel like I'd have a very different perspective on this game if I'd kept playing with Tikrit as the gunman, you know, in our original little implementation. But, um, but you know, we, we never stuck with that in the end. So I wonder how true it really is that you run out of pellets super quick. I wonder if that, whether that was just the prevailing opinion amongst me and some of my friends because we weren't very good at the game when it first came out. Anyway, so this whole hidden area here doesn't really offer us anything. As you can see, I'm wandering in circles. Um, but there is a secret button right next to the door that closed us originally, which we can now use to get out. And do remember that we were originally just trying to press on these pressure pads. Now that this one is permanently down, that's the last one we need to get along that long corridor. So, uh, I didn't tell you guys we were going to get completely out of this floor this one episode, did I? Jeez, that was a pretty lofty goal! Oh my god, hello. Why didn't I craft any potions? It's alright, I'm confident we'll blow the poop out of this guy. Oh god, we're, we're, we're... Uh, Lota Papo, good job. A little bit of the old switcheroo, there we go, nice. Someone actually mentioned to me as well the idea of in the previous game there was like a, a kind of a monk build you could play where you go unarmed and you sort of go do loads of damage. I don't really think that's so much of a thing in Grimrock 2. Um, at least we're not doing it here. All right, there we go. So that snake must have walked along. Oh no, ah uh, yes, I remember. So you're going to immediately want to go down there, right? As, you, as the regular player would wish to. But do remember... I told you guys that there was a secret door over here. Now, where did that cobra come from? It came from in here. Funnily enough, though, this doesn't seem to offer us anything. It's not really a place where you'll get treasure. I think maybe it opens onto something later. Is there a trap door above us? No. Interesting. I thought there was something here, but that's where that snake gets released from. Um, you know, I would have thought they might have been a lot more nondescript about that if it was literally just there to spawn an enemy, essentially, in kind of a clever way. Uh, we're not going to rest while Lotopafo is complaining about needing food. Fine, there you go. Eat up. Stand and you're fine. You can starve for now. We've got to hoard this, this food. Uh, Junk is getting to the point now where he needs a lot of food to level up, and he will probably level a couple of times. Oh my god, what the hell? Does that always happen? Ah, oh, these things are so freaky. 
They are so freaky. It's outrageous. I love the design of them. They're, they're like this game's version of the spiders. I've been told and I totally agree with that kind of assessment of them. Scary things that are a pain and they just move creepily and they jump out at you. Ugh, God. I'm not even a person that's particularly scared of snakes. I don't know about you guys, but... Honestly, snakes? I mean, there was this old TV show, okay? Some of you guys will know what I'm talking about. Called Fort Boyard, alright? And this aired in England, um... God, it must have been late 90s, early 2000s. It was one of these shows where contestants would go on and they'd have a chance to win money if they did all this ridiculous, like, physically demanding stuff. And it always had... And um, so this, this pit here, if we climb down, this is your opportunity to get back down and look for the secrets and stuff in the event that you've lifted all four of those pressure pads up, which we absolutely have. So. It's fine, all these trapdoors. Um, it just takes you back down. So yeah, Fort Boyard always had this bit where someone, usually like some weak looking girl that was, you know, paid basically to scream a lot and make things entertaining, was supposed to go into a snake pit and, uh, you know, grab a key. Like one of the snakes would have like a password written on its underside and they'd have to go in and the challenge was to find it in enough time and they'd be like, oh, snakes, I'm so scared. But I always used to watch that even as a kid and be like, what are you talking about? Come on, this isn't scary. This is just a snake. Anyway, so uh, something very interesting here. We've got a face. We've seen this setup many times, right? So we know that what's probably going to happen when we press this button. It's probably going to fire a bolt, and we even can guess it probably needs to go into this. So let's have a look. There's also the fear that it's a bolt that will harm us. Well, unfortunately, it's not. So this is coming, so we're going to come along here. And it opens the gate, which makes a lot of sense. Um, very keen-eyed people, though, might notice something a little bit interesting that just happened there. Two things actually happened at once. First of all, we've got this key. Fantastic. Now, this is the tomb key. Very elaborate, very cool looking. Lodo Pepho is happy with this, and he's going to keep that. Um, but also, around on this corner, you'll see what kind of looks like there's a bit of a light under this, right? If we throw the torch away, it sort of looks like something's going on here. Um, now, if you listen very carefully, this is where sound design is kind of a big thing. If you listen very carefully, when we open this gate, you might notice something. So, we're going to close the gate here by doing that. And now, listen, I'm going to crank the volume up and I'm going to be really quiet. Here we go. Now, I can barely hear that. I've got a bit of an issue with my left ear at the moment, which is the same. I don't know whether this is a coincidence, but it's the same ear I put, like, my iPhone headphones into when I'm recording the podcast with Matt. But, like, I've got a wax build up and I'm waiting for this thing to come so that I can actually get it out. But I can barely hear right now. Hopefully you guys heard this, though. There's the sound of a door closing there. And if we close the gate close to us again, you can hear it closing. So basically, the, the setup here is there's a secret. This gate, when, the, when we open the gate, there's another door in that room which is going to close. Right now, that door's open, but of course, we're stuck on this side of the gate. So how do we get through? How do we have our cake and eat it too? Well, this is the way you do it. It's one of these speed puzzles. On my test file when I was here, I was limping around. You want to open the gate, and if we run through, I'll show you guys what I mean. You'll see that's closing, right? If we're quite quick. Now, it's impossible to run that fast. We're not going to make it. So right now, this gate's open. The wall is shut. Now, what we're going to do is fire this beam, and we're going to try and get through the gate before it closes again, and then it will be open. All right? So here we go. Check it out. Woo! And now, if we look over, the door is opening. So that's really cool. I quite like this. Uh, we get a secret. We get a switch which lets us back out. And um, some nice boots. These are the Mirror Greaves. The Mirror Gear Set is something we're going to be finding a lot of around here. Um, protection plus 8. Resist all plus 5. Someone did mention something very cool about Loto Pafo. And that is that uh, we have... Where is it? Where did we get it? It wasn't the Bronze Brace. The Serpent Brace here, if you remember, it's got Resist Poison plus 50. Um, now this, because of Loto Pafo's like, innate defenses and stuff, we actually give it to him. I don't know whether it will come up on like traits or stats or anything. Well, what have we got? Resist poison here. We've got resist poison is now up at 100%. And this means he's actually immune to poison. So this will make him pretty nice against the snakes. Uh, I don't really know whether I, I, I... Even though that puts him to 100%. I mean, does overall that actually change much? I guess it does change things, right? Maybe that is more more worthwhile than having it on Junker. And then we'll swap and we'll put this evasive buckler. See, the evasive buckler does nothing for Junker. That's the problem. 
Um, maybe we can just put that over here on, uh, well, Tikrit doesn't have any evasion either. No one's got any evasion. What's going on? Tikrit needs to start learning light armor. All right, what if we do that, and then we do the critical chance, like so. Yeah, that works. That's quite nice. All right, so there you go. Uh, that was this secret with a mirror greaves, um, and we'll start specking into armors and things soon enough. You guys might be a little bit sad. At some point, we're going to find a new weapon in this uh, pyramid that I really don't want to use. But maybe you can drop your input when we get there. So anyway, what was the whole point of this? To get that key. Um, so we got the tomb key. This entire area is explored. It wasn't really that long of, a, of an experience in there, right? So you don't have to be too in intimidated by the next wing, which I find infinitely more interesting. So we'll come through. And what do we want to do now that we've got this key? Well, we can put it into one of these locks. Either one. It doesn't matter. It's of our choice. So I'm going to put it into this one first. Um, and we're going to come into this interesting room here. Now... Uh, how do I, how do I, what, what order should we do things in? Alright, for now, I'll just say we've got this room here, we'll leave it at that, okay? Um, and we'll sort that out later. For now, let's try the other angle, and um, we'll swap that torch out, and uh, we'll come back here later. So now we just want to get our next key, and this time we're going to check out the Tomb of the Highborn. And this was, again, one of those places that scared the poop out of me. Like, it's so huge. Here we've got a, a save crystal, so I guess realistically I shouldn't have been that scared. But I don't like these big open areas that don't seem to really have anything patrolling the corridors. Here we've got a place called the Burial Chambers. That seems pretty scary already. Um, over here, there should be a closed door. Yeah, we come into this room with a gate sort of showing us somewhere else with some artifact on a, on a co cove there and a closed gate. Ultimately, uh, you know, we're looking for a key. We're trying to get another key. We're going to collect the key from this wing and then this door will open and this will be our way out. So it's like we're going to raid this whole tomb and then this is our exit from the tomb. The tomb of the Highborn. So this is where we'll finally end. Um, and this leaves us with just this one door left here to open up. So we'll pull this. I kind of like, kind of like the animation of the rope of the chains when you pull it looking side on. They kind of come out a little bit. And this kind of thing, just where you open up, you've got to, you've got to look on the left, you've got to look on the, on the right. It's not nice. You've got these sort of, sort of locked gates we're looking. The burial chambers. Oh, man, you just know it's going to be full of undead and danger and death, right? So we've got all of these locked gates. Um, I'm going to leave them shut for now. It reminds me an awful lot, this bit, of an area in Grimrock 1 where behind those gates was basically a huge nest of spiders. Obviously, it was a very different kind of situation. But here you'll find, oh, look, we're at this door now. And we get some artifacts. This is the start of a really interesting puzzle. Um, I probably got time to show it off to you guys. So here we get something called the Moonblade. This thing is awesome. Let's equip it. Check it out. Our damage goes way up. This is a light weapon. Scales on decks. 10 to 31. That's so much better than our other things. 5 to 13? Uh, 5 to 15? Sorry, going all the way up to 10 to 31. Accuracy plus 10 as a bonus on top of that we never had before. And check out the special ability, okay? This uh, says, a series of three quick slashes with deadly accuracy. This symbolizing the death and rebirth. This blade is held in high esteem by the Zafi priests and priestesses. Badass. Well, we've also got a note here. And it says, note, this is the moon blade. A gift for Nom Nom the Warrior, his companion and their child. The Eternity welcomes them. Oh, so this was a gift for someone else, was it? Well, we're going to keep this. And over here, we get another gift. Let's give this one to Sanon. This is a Wand of Fear. Um, now, this is um, actually a physical weapon. It is not a spellcasting weapon, which you might expect. To right-click on it would be to swing with it. So I'm giving it to Sanon because it's a wand, but really, I don't know. It's not It's not actually for spellcasting. Um, but it does have a special ability called Cloud of Nightmares, uh, which requires concentration too. It says this wand will strike fear into the hearts of your enemies. And if we were to use this special ability here... You get this freaky looking uh, death cloud with a skull looking at, at you. Cool stuff. But again, oh, we got a note. Okay, I feel kind of bad for taking other people's stuff, don't you guys? Um, a gift for Haman the Merchant. Gold was his only company. The Eternity welcomes him. Well, it turns out we don't get to keep these items. Not yet. There is a clever way for us to be able to keep these things. But we need to explore these burial chambers and return these gifts to their rightful owners. So, in this one, for example, we've got some stuff. Uh, here is our first greater potion in the game. Um, this is something that Tikrit will eventually be able to make for us, but for now we can't, so we're finding them just as loot, which is pretty cool. This will just heal a lot more, which is great. We'll leave it there for now. And we've also got some bread, which is great. We're just going to loot this tomb. And on this sarcophagus here, we find another note. Tikrit's going to read this. And he says, Here rests Tap, the architect. 
Lilith, his companion and their two loyal servants. The Eternity welcomes them. So uh, here you can see the setup for the puzzle. Tehep the architect, um, his companion and their two loyal servants. The Eternity welcomes them. So Tehep is here. This is his companion. And these are his two loyal servants. So we sort of know from this tomb. Okay, we're kind of playing a game here where we're looking for how many bodies are in each burial chamber. And uh, we're feeling pretty safe here as well, right? There don't seem to be many enemies. So let's check this burial chamber. We've got um, nothing much going on so far, it would seem. But again, another body. So this guy's been buried alone. Ah, well, we do have a note here. The uh, Moonblade, uh, not the Moonblade, the Wand of Fear was a gift for Haman the Merchant. Gold was his only company. The Eternity welcomes him. So I think that makes sense, right, guys? Doesn't that? So uh, this was for the Wand of Fear, so we're going to drop it on there. No sound effects play, nothing to suggest that maybe we've got it right, but hey, it's a hunch. We'll keep trying. Um, and if we continue along, we'll come to another burial chamber here. And what do we see in this one? We see one... And then just uh, something here. So someone who only had one companion? Well, what was the other one? What do you have to say, Loto Pafo? The Moonblade was a gift for Num Num the Warrior, his companion, and their child. So no, this person only has a companion and no one else. Turns out this room isn't used for anything except the fact that there's a secret in here. If you press this button, knock your arrows, maybe? I can't remember. <laughs> No, we're okay. Um, so there is this secret in this room and nothing else. Here we find the Storm Amulet. There's been a lot of stuff in the game that's been giving us Resist Shock. So this is Resist Shock plus 50 and um, will Willpower plus 2. So Willpower really goes best on Sanon, who currently only has the Runestone Necklace, which is just Willpower plus 1. So we'll do it this way. And even though the Willpower probably doesn't mean much, we'll give it to Loto Papha. That gives him a little bit more energy. Uh, that The uh, special ability on this is very costly. So a tiny bit of willpower will eventually be at mean he can cast it twice instead of just the once. Uh, we also find a lockpick. Not really many locked chests in the uh, pyramid, I've got to say. It's kind of cool. It's like the idea of the people who left the chests weren't the Zafi. They weren't the same people who built this pyramid and came here at a different time. So anyway, there we go. That leaves us with just one burial chamber. This one over here on the left. We've got some uh, black moss for Tikrit. And what do you know? We've got a person laying down his companion and their child, or their child and their maid, or whatever it was. So here we unfortunately do have to give the Moonblade up. We'll drop it down. Again, there's not going to be any audio cues or anything that we've done anything correct. But if we have um, a look down the corridor now, and run back up to where we originally got these items... Ah! You will find the door is open. And there's some monsters in there, so I'm going to save the game. 